Hi everyone, I'm Tillman, Engineering Manager for the AI and ML team. Today, we'll be talking about upcoming AI and ML-based advancements aimed at helping developers find and fix critical problems faster. The core product helps surface problems in code, send alerts, and provide important context to fix those problems. However, it can be hard for developers to know what to focus on when they have lots of Sentry issues to review. This led us to investigate new approaches to making Sentry more actionable. We're starting with the beginning of our data pipeline, where we're improving the quality of our grouping algorithm responsible for generating the issues in your Sentry feed. Next, we're using AI and ML to better prioritize and filter out the noise from alerts. Finally, we'll introduce AutoFix, which is our generative AI solution to issue resolution. First, let's cover how we'll be applying ML to something that's core to errors in Sentry, grouping. Grouping transforms the firehose of errors data sent to Sentry into an actionable list of issues. We accomplish this by fingerprinting error events, or determining what bits and pieces of a stack trace are relevant for uniquely identifying them. However, it's not perfect. Things such as a file or method being renamed, updating your Python version, or just adding an extra new line somewhere in your code can all cause unnecessary groups to be created, which results in more alerts in a busy issue stream. Here, we can see an example of this behavior caused by an updated Python version. This is where the ML comes in. We're using a powerful embeddings model to build a semantic representation of error stack traces. This representation enables us to efficiently compare errors and automatically identify instances where they should be grouped together. The start of our grouping flow won't change. For each new event you send us, we start by applying our fingerprint algorithm. If it's a new hash, our ML grouping algorithm steps in. It takes the embedding from the stack trace and identifies whether there's an existing issue that it's semantically identical to. If so, we simply merge them together. So what does this look like in practice? Right now, I'm running a script that occasionally throws errors during a recursive function call, which is a common failure case in our current grouping logic. On the left, we can see our old grouping logic, which occasionally generates new issues as errors continue to come in. On the right, our updated grouping algorithm is able to correctly aggregate every single error into the same issue. We've begun testing this internally, and so far, we're seeing a 30 to 50% reduction in issue volume and far fewer instances of grouping mistakes. With this update, we're taking a big step forward in our ability to surface high quality issues. These updates will begin rolling out to early access customers starting next month. Now, I'm gonna pass it over to Rachel to share more about how we'll use our new concept of issue priority to improve alerts. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel, a product manager working with the AI ML team to improve Sentry's alerting experience. For users of Sentry configuring a new project, a default alert rule is set to alert you on every new issue created. At the beginning, especially for smaller projects, this works great. Over time, as error counts grow, the number of alerts received can be overwhelming. The same pattern exists on the issue stream. A high number of errors can be difficult to manage. What issues should you look at first versus triage later? We've been working on a set of updates that combine statistical methods and ML to better prioritize issue alerts in the issue stream so that we can more effectively filter out the noise you don't need to worry about. The priority model analyzes incoming errors and identifies the ones that you are unlikely to engage with based on prior actions on similar issues. These issues will be automatically tagged as low priority and will not trigger new issue alerts or appear on your feed by default. In some cases, low priority issues can become bigger problems if they spike in volume. We've added safeguards where we'll automatically update the priority of those issues to high when we detect escalating volume. Our goal with these updates is to make each alert and issue viewed higher signal. And this means that your team can spend more time working on what matters. Next, Jen is going to show how our newest feature, AutoFix, can analyze errors in Sentry to speed up your triage and fix workflows. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm a machine learning engineer on the AIML team. I'm here to introduce you to our upcoming feature, AutoFix. We built AutoFix with the belief that you should spend less time fixing bugs and more time on improving your product. Think of it like a junior developer in your team. 
You can assign them straightforward bugs and they'll be able to take a good crack at it and throw in a couple unit tests to reproduce the issue. The first time using Autofix, it automatically indexes your code base from the Git repository linked to your Sentry project. When you trigger Autofix, it starts by analyzing the issue and its stack trace to give a preliminary assessment of what it thinks the problem is. It then formulates an execution plan to fix the issue given the prior assessment and index code base. Finally, it outputs a draft pull request for you to review. If at any point you want to improve the preliminary assessment or final result, you can provide additional context to Autofix. Let's now go to a live demo to see how this works. To start, you'll find Autofix on the details page of any issue. Today, we're going to be looking at this JSON serialization error where we can't serialize the enum value. This was a real internal sentry issue. You can optionally submit context if you think it will help improve the final solution. All right, we're ready to see a fix. Autofix will begin step-by-step -step analyzing the problem and executing the plan. You can watch what the steps are in a CI-like interface that should feel familiar to most developers. The first result we get back is a preliminary assessment. It has correctly assessed that the error occurs because an enum type is not serializable. Now, it would generate an execution plan. Here, we see that it will create a custom JSON encoder and then utilize that encoder in the RPC client call. It will now execute the plan step by step. First, it modifies code to create the JSON encoder and then modifies the RPC client call. Once it is done, it will give us a preview of the pull request it makes and you can view it like any other pull request with individual commits for each step it performs. Looking at the changes made by Autofix, you will see that it has generated unit tests informed by the error from Sentry. This helps solve one of the most difficult parts of debugging, reproducing the error. With the reproduction case covered, this also prevents the same problem from occurring again. Autofix can respond to the pull request when you leave a comment or a CI failure occurs, and adapt its changes accordingly. I will now make a comment telling it to add a new test case. Test that the RPC client call uses our new custom JSON encoder. It processes my request and makes a commit to input the change requested. You can see that with Autofix, I was able to get assistance to understand the problem and a potential fix with unit tests. This can dramatically speed up existing workflows and help developers get more hours back in their day. Tillman is now going to come back to share how we're thinking about data and privacy in relation to this upcoming work. Sentry operates under the principle of privacy by default. With open source values at the core of our identity, it's important that our work in the AI and ML space stays true to who we are. We've introduced a new consent flow into our product, which asks for permission to use specific aspects of your service data. Our goal was to make this as direct and transparent as possible. We're also distinguishing the consent flow for our ML use cases, such as grouping or issue priority, from our generative AI features. For example, Autofix will require you to opt in to our new subprocessors before you can gain access. We're also releasing our primary repo, which supports all of our ML and AI features under the functional source license. Furthermore, we'll publicly release any fine-tuned models that we develop as we continue to build our product. Our focus is on making Sentry better for you in keeping with open source and privacy by default as our values. We're so excited to share our vision for how Sentry can use AI and ML to help you fix faster, and we can't wait to build more. These new features are meant to make Sentry more actionable and easier to use, because less time spent debugging means more time building great user experiences. To learn about everything coming your way, check out the blog post linked below. If you want to get early access to ML-based grouping, alerts, or autofix, please join our waitlists. And if you'd like to share your thoughts, questions, or feedback on any of these upcoming features, please join us on Discord. In the coming months, the AI and ML team will be working closely with CodeCub to further enhance their PR comment functionality. You can learn more about this by tuning into tomorrow's session featuring CodeCub. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.